Welcome back to Daybreak Live, final half hour of the show on this uh, 21st day of April. We're joined this morning by Marie Manning, who's a candidate for Alabama Board of Education District 6 in the Republican primary coming up next month. Marie, good morning. Good morning to you. Thank you for allowing me to come oh, today. We're honored to have you. Uh, <coughs> tell us a little bit about Marie Manning. Well, Marie Manning started teaching in Munford, Alabama in 1970. Prior to that, I had attended JSU, received a bachelor's degree in science, got a job the day that I graduated <laughs> from college. How lucky is that? Yeah. And I uh, loved Munford, Alabama, so I always feel at home anytime I'm around Talladega County. The, Talk about uh, your educational background. My uh, After I Started teaching in Munford. I was there four years, married a young man, moved to Asheville, and uh, started teaching in Pell City. Mm -hmm. And in Pell City, I was the library media, spe uh, the science teacher, and then I was library media. Okay, my husband passed away, and I took a year off, came back mm -hmm. as library media, worked there 17 years. Then went to Asheville High School as the assistant principal, Asheville Middle as the principal. Was really encouraged by many folks to run for superintendent of St. Clair County Schools, and I did. And I was elected and enjoyed that job. Took a job there that money was, we were in trouble with money. Mm -hmm. And uh, had $80,000 of unreserved fund balance. Would not even have covered a week <laughs> of expenses with AP and uh, I worked four years very careful management a lot of encouragement from uh, our staff our teachers were encouraging we managed to leave the next superintendent 11 million dollars so that's I, quite an increase <laughs> it is and we built two high schools and built on to one uh, intermediate school but we had to do it we we had no choice so we did what we had to do. I've made some tough decisions in education. Whenever I finished in four years, retired, then I went on to the um, State Department, did a little contract work with them, did some contract work with Montgomery Public Schools, with Calhoun County Schools, and then came back to St. Clair County Schools and did some contract work, and then went to work with Jeff State Community College on a part-time basis mostly mm -hmm. working in our high schools and fairly enjoyed that so i've had the experience if you count k4 <laughs> in the superintendent years i've had the experience uh, of all levels and i am now a member of the st Clair county board of education and that's been tough with covid and all that we have experienced with that it's been easy because of all the federal monies we've had but we know that's not going to last. Yeah, that federal money will run out after a while. It does. Yeah. It will. And then there will be some hard decisions yeah. to make. Talk a little bit about uh, <laughs> District 6. What areas and what counties that include? District 6 includes, and I'm, I'm going to cheat right okay. here. District 6 includes uh, <clears throat> St. Clair County, of course. It, Calhoun, Cherokee, Etowah, Marshall. That's a lot of area. Coleman. <laughs> Tell me, I can't keep my <laughs> gas tank full. <laughs> Talladega and Blount County. It does not include the city, the lower part of Talladega. So, Sylacauga is not in well, my district. Well, fortunately, we cover the entire state with this show. So, right, uh, right. Uh, you, you're in right. A, a, a District 6 Alabama Board of Education. Now, what's different on being in Alabama Board of Education than, say, superintendent of St. Clair County? Well, when you're superintendent of a school system, you have a board that you work with, and you're able to pretty much, you and the board can lead the direction of the school system on a much smaller mm -hmm. scale than the state board does. The state board, very similar to what the uh, county board does in that it is a policy-making board. Mm -hmm. And one, <clears throat> one thing that probably some folks don't realize is we don't give raises, we don't build buildings, a local board can do mm -hmm. that, but what we do is implement the laws that the legislature passes each year. So what are, what are some of the issues you see now that you'd like to address if elected to the Alabama Board of Education District 6? 
I'm very pleased with the way some things are going now with the Board of Education. The legislature has passed the new pay raise and has given <clears throat> another alternative for those who are retired educators to come into the school system and teach if they're if their certificate has run out, mm -hmm. there's an easy way to get that renewed so that we can have some more teachers in the classroom. Lots of issues with the uh, uh, teacher retainment and teacher shortage, but I hope that's going to help. And the state board is the one who kind of sets the per parameters, I guess, for making sure that help, that will help. Mm -hmm. And I want to be a part of yeah. that. Uh, Marie Manning, who's candidate for Alabama District, uh, Alabama Board of Education District 6 in the Republican primary coming up uh, May the 24th. Marie, I want you to look in this camera right here and, and, and share with people what has happened to reading, writing, and arithmetic that I learned years ago. Where are we at now? Well, just as everything has, it has changed over the last few years, so has the process of teaching, reading, math, and arithmetic. <laughs> and one of the things that I think we, we are judged often because our national scores are not at the top with other states. When the Alabama Reading Initiative was first implemented, our reading scores in Alabama increased more than any other state in the nation. And then we kind of let back a little bit and started using some of those reading coaches in other grade levels, and that caused some problems. Mm -hmm. and, and it caused us to lose the ground that we had made. But the State Department is the one who says, let's go ahead, let's with the legislature's funding, let's go ahead and let's get those reading coaches back the way they were, and let's get those math coaches back the, in the same manner. Mm -hmm. And that, I think, is going to really help. And no, we don't do four plus four anymore, or two plus two. We do that, but we do it through a complicated thinking process <laughs> to try to get students to be able to if they're out in the field somewhere doing something, they can go, oh, that's two plus two, so that's almost five, and try to do math in their head. And I know I have an eight-year-old grandson, and he can come up with an answer oh, quicker yeah. than I can <laughs> because he's used to that way of thinking. Mm -hmm. the, uh, the process that we have for being judged by other states is a process that takes just a handful of students in some school systems and gives them a test. One of the, thing that the things that the State Department is working on is to make sure we teach the standards that that particular test is going to judge our children by. And if we do that, then I think we're going to see Alabama rise to the top. We also, thank you legislators, we also have had um, legislation passed to put math coaches into the classrooms and to help the teachers teach math the way that students are now learning mm -hmm. it. Two things. Uh, one, two years of COVID. Oh. It, just, it just turned the tables on everything in our world. How do we recover in our schools from two years of this pandemic? You know, we talked a little bit about some of the federal funds that mm -hmm. we're getting. Those federal funds are being used in the summer, they're being used after school, and they're being used to bring students who are at the lowest, based on the data that we have, to bring those students up to grade level. We are doing our best to overcome the cruel nature of COVID. Our students are COVID fatigued. Yeah. Our teachers are mm. COVID fatigued. And our parents, bless your heart parents, I understand. I sat with my grandchild in, in a virtual class. I learned some things that day and it was a second grade class. But it's 
parents are just worn out from it. Mm. And there's nothing anyone can do. It happened to us. It's the way we respond to it. So we're trying to respond in a positive way to help those students get the help they need mm. and to come. I don't see it happening immediately. I think it will. It took two years for us to get where we are. I think it'll take two years for us to get out of that. But I do see there's some progress well, coming. Marie Manning, who's candidate for Alabama Board of Education District 6 in the Republican primary on May the 24th. We talked about this uh, a little bit uh, a few minutes ago, but uh, retaining teachers, the competitive nature of, of teaching now from, uh, from one state to another. How do we keep teachers in Alabama? How do we, how do we secure our boundaries for teachers here? The, <clears throat> the state legislature sets out a salary matrix that says if a teacher is teaching first year, then they will be paid this amount. In Alabama, the teaching salary matrix was good up to about year 10, and we were competitive with other states. After year 10, what we saw was that the states around us were paying a much higher salary mm -hmm. than we are. The legislature has now said that if you are a nine-month classroom teacher, then your salary matrix will increase up to year 30 because they were topping out at year 25. Is that going to work? It is, and here's how I know that. We have teachers in St. Clair County Schools, which is the system I'm most familiar mm -hmm. with, who have said this year, well, I was retiring, but I'm going to stay a little bit longer. And so instead of going to Georgia or to Tennessee, Florida, Mississippi, and teach, they're going to stay in Alabama, mm -hmm. and we need that. And another thing the legislature did, and thank you legislators again, another thing they did is they said, we will make sure that our teachers coming in get some of the benefits as the ones who were in when I was in. Mm -hmm. And that's, um, that will help as well, because I think there was a thinking that young teachers don't think about retirement down the road and they were having to wait until they were 65 or 62 if early enough to retire. And so now they can retire at year 30 with full benefits rather than waiting to that age. So I think that's mm -hmm. going to help retain teachers and encourage new teachers to come in. But the problem is not so much retaining them as it is getting them. Our colleges are not turning teachers out. That's not very good grammar, but they're not preparing teachers because students are not entering that field. And so Why that's not? the, I think maybe it had something to do with the benefits that they were receiving mm -hmm. down the road. Uh, teaching's tough. Teaching is tough. It's not like it was in 1970 when I went to Munford High School. Mm -hmm. It's a little different. And uh, I think we'll see th that uh, we, as veteran teachers, need to make it more attractive mm. to young people who are not really attracted to mm. it. Math teachers. <clears throat> JSU only had, I think it was last year, six math teachers, six that graduated. Well, we can use six math teachers in St. Clair County schools. So there is another way to be certified if you have a degree that is math loaded, then you can take a praxis exam and be certified to teach math, and we have some folks doing yeah. that. Uh, before we go this morning, we spend a few minutes with Marie Manning, who is a candidate for Alabama Board of Education District 6, uh, and uh, uh, covers uh, a number of parts of different counties. I saw uh, where a theme they were using is, is a biblical verse that comes from Proverbs chapter 29, where there is no vision, the people perish. Why did you tag with that? Well, I tagged with that early on, and I had, uh, I just believed that verse. I, if we don't plan to do something, we won't. 
And if we don't plan for the future, we won't. And I think that's what that verse is saying. Mm. That verse is saying, we must have a vision. Yeah. And I'm, I'm hopeful that our vision is getting better. And I would love to be a part of that. Final moment with Marie Manning, candidate for Alabama Board of Education, District 6 in the uh, May Republican primary. Uh, talk to potential voters for the next uh, minute or two as to why they should vote for you on May 24th. I think it's very important that we elect someone who is connected to people and who is connected to leadership. I've had some grand opportunities that as a young child, I would never have thought would come my way. Those opportunities have provided me access in areas that will be beneficial to you as a voter if you will elect me to be your state Board of Education member in District 6. I've served on the Alabama Association of School Boards. I have uh, been a member of that Board of Directors. So I'm aware of many areas of education that can be improved. I'm aware of many areas in the legislature that can help us. And I just think I have a connection to many governmental bodies that will be helpful. But I know many people that are just like you, and I know how to treat people, and I want to be your school board member. I appreciate you for even listening to this program and getting to know me. I've been married 41 years after having been widowed uh, five years. I married to Paul Manning, who is chairman of the county commission in St. Clair County. So I have connections with all of your county commissions and many other elected officials. And that's very helpful in trying to get something accomplished at any level of government. Thank you so much for being with us this morning. Thank you. My pleasure. Marie Manning, candidate for Alabama Board of Education District 6 in the Republican May 24th primary election. More Daybreak coming up right after this.